All right, this is the first video in the user submission series. I'm really excited about this series and it seems like uh, you guys are into this as well. I got quite a few submissions, more than I was uh, anticipating. And I, I was going to make this, um, each video have like two or three boards in each. But when I started going through them, there was no way I could cram multiple boards into a 10 minute video. So what I think I'm gonna do is a single user submitted uh, board in each video, and that'll allow me to go more in depth into each of them and also uh, get more videos out to you guys. So I'll leave a link in the description for the overview of this series and how to submit them. Um, and one thing to note, when you submit them, try to give me a little bit more background information on the board, uh, like what it does, what's its purpose, and just stuff like that, uh, just to make it a little bit easier when I go through that. And with all of that out of the way, this is the first submitted board. It's by a user named Demetrius. I believe I pronounced that right, hopefully. And again, there wasn't a ton of information when he submitted this to me, but what it appears to be is a ethernet conversion board that takes an ethernet signal and uses this ENC chip to convert it to a standard serial SPI output. Uh, I saw a couple uh, boards online that use this same chip, so I'm pretty sure that's what it does. Uh, hopefully, that's what it does. And he said that this was going to be on like a single, single layer board. Uh, we can go into that when we get onto the PCB after this. Um, but first, I guess I'll just go through each block and let me know if you like this format of video or if you would rather it be done a different way. So first off, I like how you separate everything into nice and compact blocks. It makes it a lot easier going through it. For your IO connection, uh, looks fine. Um, depending on how you want to do this for the interface, maybe you could add a VCC or ground all in your SPI header, so you at least ground, so you don't have to have your ground reference to a different IO pin, but you maybe are doing it in a different way than I'm uh, thinking, so that's fine. For your ethernet block here for the ENC chip, uh, looks pretty good. Um, nothing really jumps out at me. Obviously I didn't go through the, uh, the whole data sheet, but from everything that I can gather, it looks fine. Uh, same story with your power converter. Uh, the 100 microfarad output seems like a lot of capacitance for your cap, um, and usually you want these to be ceramics, but since it's a through-hole board, that makes it a little bit tougher. Um, it should be fine, but just note that's usually higher than is typical on one of these converters. Um, now for your level shifter buffer, um, I'm not too sure on what these are accomplishing. I mean, obviously you're shifting the level um, because what comes in from an ethernet isn't 3.3. Three. For this one, that makes sense because when this is high, that's high since you hold this low. But with your chip select here, with it being low when it's active, that's fine. But when this goes high, it makes this a uh, high impedance output, um, which is low, but I just don't know why you need the chip select in here. I might be misunderstanding what you're doing um, and it could be fine. Uh, so just, cause typically your chip select goes straight to your board, your chip, which you do have it, but it's also into this, so I, I assume it works fine, um, but just uh, maybe leave a comment about what that is so I could figure that out. And then your magnetic jack seems fine, again, without looking into the data sheet. 
um, as long as you get your series resistors properly specced, which it seems like you have that accounted for. So overall, with a quick glance, the schematic looks pretty, pretty good. Looks um, nice and neat, nothing jumps out of the page at me. And now going to the PCB itself. So this is another thing I might be misunderstanding your message um, because it's not a single layer board because you do have layers on the top and bottom. Um, so I don't know if maybe I'm misunderstanding something here, but ignoring that message, the big thing that jumps out on me here is your ground pour is really broken up um, to the point where you're gonna have some pretty bad ground loops, especially since you're using an ethernet, which is pretty high speed. Uh, obviously it just converts it to an SPI line, which isn't near as fast, but your input and output lines, which come in from your ethernet, I doubt you're going to be able to go over anything over the 10 meg. You're not going to be able to do the 100 or 1,000, uh, mainly because of those ground loops. And also, these are not uh, matched length or impedance at all. And also, with through-hole components, that adds a lot of noise on these pins here. Um, so definitely with this a surface mount board would be better but i'm sure you know that but just for ease of use soldering you went with a through hole so that's the biggest thing that jumps out to me i would highly recommend making this a two layer board and then flooding the top layer since you have this referenced with uh ground uh the bottom layer uh with a ground plane make the top plane all ground and stitch them together with vias and that's going to help a lot with noise and ground loops on here because it's not going to be broken up as much and also i don't know if this one's going to be home etched or not but if you have a board that has almost all the copper on one layer and the other doesn't you get a lot of warping on the boards and you'll see that a lot of times with like the cheaper Chinese breakout boards, it'll warp really bad in the direction that doesn't have any copper. So pretty much you always wanna have a ground pour on top and bottom if you're using a two layer board. Um, but otherwise the traces all seem to be routed pretty well. Um, right here, this trace, again, I don't know what this is representing since you said it was a one layer board, but it goes into your solder mask and there's really no need for that. You could just take it around a little bit and avoid that or move your capacitors over. Um, just whenever you can give yourself more space, you obviously want to, but the traces are routed pretty well from what I can see. Uh, obviously, and this is where it depends if it's just going to be a personal use board, it's fine, but just stuff like these where you make these um, turns in the traces where you could realistically just go straight up and then 45 it over, that's just an aesthetic issue. It's not going to affect the board and low speed uh, signals. Same with here, a lot of these don't have to be as uh, snaking around as they are, but it's not gonna affect the board um, really at all. And this is again with using a through hole based board, you lose the ability of having the decoupling capacitors super close to the traces, to the uh, power input pins of the IC itself, which usually is fine, but you're gonna have more noise on these power traces, both because you're using electrolytic caps as compared to a uh, low ESR ceramic cap. So it depends. This board just kind of scares me a little bit 
having a high-speed Ethernet jack with a through-hole based board and a single layer board. Not to say, again, if you slow down the Ethernet speed and your SPI line isn't super fast, there's not going to be a problem that I can see. But anytime you get into Ethernet speeds, uh, 10 megahertz, 100, uh, anything like that is when the traces and ground loops and stuff like that become an issue. So just keep that in mind. And then one other thing that, I, that I'm not really sure of, how your VCC, I'm guessing this is just a jumper where you can use either a five volt input to VCC or a three three volt to VCC. But I don't really know if this is where it inputs or not, but just make sure all of your chips are compatible with both three three and five, because it seems like if it's, I don't know, um, I'm not sure how this works again, maybe send some notes with that next time. But otherwise, this is a really good looking board uh, layout wise. And as long as the ethernet speeds are pretty low, I think it should work out pretty good. So hopefully that short little overview was helpful. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description for how you can submit any other boards and hopefully this series is something that you guys like and we can keep it going and yeah let me know in the comments uh, what you think or if there's anything you would like changed or ideas for another series or another video